Hey, uh, everyone. So today we're getting pretty close to the end of this book. We are working on chapter 24 of um, the Outstanding User Interfaces with Shiny book. The um, chapter is about making progressive web apps using Shiny Mobile, the, the package, um, and some of the uh, additional features that you have to put into your code in order to turn a shiny app into a progressive web app, a PWA as they refer to them in here. Um, this is part of a, a subsection of the book, five chapters or six chapters, where we are looking in depth into how shiny mobile was pieced together from shiny itself and from uh, the framework 7 um html uh templating library um and today trevin is going to take us through uh chapter 24 so i'll hand over to him and uh yeah if you'd like to share your screen whenever you're ready um, yeah let me go ahead and do that um, there we go. So I think I was, um, I think I had a similar experience at, uh, as you did Russ with this chapter. Um, it seems that, uh, the author like already assumes that, you know, what a PWA is and, and some of these um, definitions, they're, they're not defined or um, it, it can be hard to follow along what's, you know, what's going on and, and why. Um, so I'm not sure if I'll end up taking the whole hour or um, I guess we'll see how it goes, but um, yeah, I'd like to, just go over this and then um, kind of help define some of uh, some some of the language in this in this chapter. Um, I see Arthur has joined us. Uh, welcome. Uh, no worries. Um, we're just getting started here. Um, were you able to um, read the chapter at all this week? Arthur? For, for my part, no, it's been a hectic couple of weeks. Okay, no worries. Um, yeah, I was just saying that, at least for me, it was a bit hard to follow, follow along. Um, and I'm not, Russ, you were talking about mobile development. I'm not entirely sure um, where the benefits come in exactly um for converting fully to like a pwa um I, i've seen examples and uh and read examples of software companies that utilize this and, and they're like oh it's uh increases like user retention by x percent um so there is some benefit depending on your application but um it wasn't immediately apparent to me um what those were um so yeah i'll get i'll get started here um uh the, the author is david is that correct david says um pwa is a game changer for end users uh so he talks about by the end of the chapter we'll uh, be able to provide uh, full screen support, making apps installable and supporting offline capabilities for the apps as well. Um, keynotes and uh, elsewhere, PWA isn't um, fully compatible with every um, operating system. Uh, there's some caveats with 
with Apple browsers. Um, I think I read that Firefox as well. Um, there might be some caveats or, or not. Uh, it doesn't come with a full like capabilities. Um, so that's just something to be aware of. And if this is something that you do implement, um, it would be helpful to um, test multiple um, multiple different like cases or scenarios, different different operating systems. Um, uh, as always, the code examples are in uh, the the book package, um, as well as a direct link um, to that. Um, I learned about, uh, I don't, I don't think, or maybe, maybe I forgot that Google Lighthouse was, if he mentioned it earlier and previously in the book, but, um, this is a tool that he utilizes to be able to diagnose, um, the app, um, performance, accessibility and whatnot. Um, and when he runs the app uh it, it tells us that we don't meet certain requirements um so no manifest no service worker uh no icons and no, no offline fallback um oh cool Pr shiny mobile preview mobile that's uh that seems helpful um was that in that video that you linked russ yeah i think so the um it was interesting because you, you you mentioned in at the top of the chapter that some of the features won't work on on ios and like um yeah this this preview mobile there's a way to start apps as if they're running on um android or ios from your um from your from in our studio basically which is really cool oh um, yeah that that sounds super helpful um yeah i wasn't i guess i assumed tools like that are available but I, like my first assumption was oh you need to be able to have android devices and apple devices to to test that but apparently um Tools like that make it easy. Um, so yeah, that's that's really cool. Um, uh, this looks helpful as well. Um, I think Lighthouse is only it's geared towards mobile testing, um, and there are other like developer tools for um, like if you're you want to specify like browser browser-based sites. Um, so to start off, uh, like he bolds manifest and service worker. Um, this is where I like got confused right away because um, I was like, I don't, I don't know what a manifest is. I don't, I don't know what a service worker is. Um, so it tells you this is like how, how it works. Um, you're you're testing a progressive web app on mobile, um, and then it then it get, generates the report and tells you what's going on. Um, so no manifest. Um, and then he basically goes into like how to set up a PWA. Um, so before that. Um, before we got on the call, I was looking at um, web.dev learn PWA. And this seemed this seemed pretty helpful to get some of the background on um, you know what some of this stuff is, what the the background of progressive web apps um, and some of these definitions as well. Um, so I think 
Yeah, two of the, two of the bigger ones, service workers, was one I was like, I don't know what that is. Um, so basically, uh, they're a part of PWA, and um, really, they're uh, presence gives uh, is 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 what really helps. Um, when you have a PWA set up, it makes it a lot faster for uh, connections, um, enable offline access, uh, push notifications and other uh, services. Um, let's see. So this is like, um, this is like an outline of what's going on. Uh, um, your PWA is the client, and then this, the service worker is like a, um, I guess it says proxy middleware, but uh, it's like a middleman between your PWA and the and the servers. Um, so it says the service worker um, will intercept the request acting as a network proxy. Um, it can then decide if it should serve the resource from cache um, from the network as normally would happen without a service worker um, or create it from a local algorithm. This lets you provide a similar experience to that provided by a platform app. It can even work entirely offline. Um, so that helped me understand like, okay, what is, what is this service worker doing? At, at least it gives me an understanding um there's definitely there's probably like a lot more that's going on beyond this like <laughs> overview but that's that's a good like at least introduction i think um and then i think in addition to the ios comments it says uh not all browsers support service workers um even when present your service worker won't be available on first load or while it's waiting to activate, uh, therefore treat it as optional and do not require it for uh, core functionality. Um, so, so I think there's some more on that. Um, let me, instead of just going like through this page completely, um, I'll link this in the chat. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if either of you, um, had a chance to take a look at this page. I, I thought it was pretty helpful, um, getting some of the background info. Yeah, I did see this page. It was, it was mentioned a couple of chapters ago. Um, and it was also, it's also mentioned in the, um, in a, a presentation about shiny mobile, but. I saw some slides from. I, I didn't actually see the presentation, but I saw the slides. Um, yeah, it does. It does contain quite a, a, a bit of information. Yeah. Um, yes, but but the things that um, we're talking about here were were mentioned in chapter twenty two. So the the manifest is like some metadata about the app, like you know, so that the client's phone knows the name of the app and and things like that the, the, those kind of things are stored in the the manifest and like you know where it can find the icon that gets displayed on the you know page of your phone um and the the, um, the service yeah. worker yeah okay yeah um yeah and 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 the the service worker is like a kind of helper to ease problems that you might have when the network goes in and out of um service and so that you can you know restart from where you were on on the app and you can cache data so that it can continue to work when there's no signal or something. Yeah, anyway. I, uh, but knowing what they are and knowing how to populate them and make them 
work. I, I, I don't know any about that. But. Yeah. Um. Uh, yeah, you're. Yeah, you're correct. Uh, I I also have a short term memory. Or, <laughs> um, let's see. Yeah, it talks about. So yeah, it talks about service workers here in chapter twenty two. Uh, um, they talking about the cash ship capabilities. Um, and then the the manifest as well. Um, it gives a short uh intro. Um. Yeah, I liked I liked this. Um, I like some of the the background on on here as well. Um, uh, just just gives some more information on on the manifest uh, required on every browser. Um, your PWA will not install without it. Um and yeah, just just gives some more info on what on what the that file is doing and, and how it's um um defining your app and, and your and the some of the features. Um yeah, it looks like there's definitely some more information on depending on what browser you have as well um so yeah I, I guess i won't go into that too much um so yeah those those are um those are those are two of the more important things uh that we need um, as well as icons and um, no offline fallback. Um, I, I did think it was interesting. Um, uh, I, I read, I, I, it might've been on the web.dev that um, your offline capabilities for your app don't necessarily have to be the same as online. Um, uh, it's useful to let the user know that like, what's not capable or, or what um, if they are offline. So like if it's a notes app, um, they can still write their notes, but it doesn't sync uh, when it's offline, like stuff like that. Um, So, uh, so uh, we we continue with uh, Charpent. Uh, it has uh, uh, he also goes at the end and mentions a, a different way to set up PWA. But uh, since we're already using Charpent, uh, it has tools to uh, set it up. Um, and I didn't go that I I read through the chapter. I didn't go through and and recreate some of this stuff. So I'm not. I'm I may be missing pieces in my like, uh, in my knowledge set of, of the complete picture here, um, but the set PWA function is uh, uh you can get this set up in one line of code and in, in one function. Um, uh, he does say that that must belong to a package. Um, we've already got that set up if we've been following along and the function must target the app directory. Um, yeah, so this is, uh, this is our PWA app. Um. Uh. Yeah. Basic. Basic setup. Um. Bu bu bu. Then we set it up with uh set PWA. Um. This is where. 
this is where I started to get uh a bit confused on on what necessarily was going on here. Um so it looks like it creates our uh necessary manifest file or web manifest file. Um downloads a compatibility script um, and adds a custom dependency um, pointing to the manifest file and in an icon file. Um, there's also a service worker uh, boilerplate as well. Um, Is that what this is that what this is right here? Um I think that is what that I I it what I think that's the content of the service worker JavaScript yeah. file. Okay. So when you're at opens it it will you know when when the load event happens which is you know you open your app and then ultimate you know a few things are going to load onto the screen eventually when that's finished um it will run this and um yeah it'll look for a pre-existing service worker and if one isn't found uh, ooh, hold on. Yeah, that's funny. Presumably that's for once a service work has been set up on the client phone or device. Um, hmm. Yeah, I don't know. It does, it, but it does look like what should be going in the service worker JavaScript file, yeah. Okay. Um, in the Shiny Mobile case, Framework 7 already registers any provided service worker. We don't need that initially. An initialization script. Um, so, therefore, we skip the creation of uh, service worker registered dot uh, JavaScript. Uh, so yeah, I guess since it's framework seven, we we add that um, to our call. Um, this function does not handle icon creation. Um, he links to a couple of tools to do that. Um, if you need to, um, so I'm guessing it won't like, it won't work at all if there's not an icon or, um, well, I, I'm not entirely certain. I think perhaps. So I'm not in the right environment to check, but um, the so for example the um, the code above uh, Sharpomp can be used to build an HTML template based on a number of you know it could be anything it doesn't necessarily have to be a framework seven thing so that PWA function set pwa within it um will probably do things that are superfluous for a framework 7 based app um so i follow that i i, I wouldn't have expected it to have made icons or anything but presumably there's an argument that you can add to set pwa that will either 
copy those icons into the directory that it makes or indicate the path to those icons from one of the files that it populates. Um, but yeah. Um, so we, we're going to go into the details a little bit. Um, yeah, I guess this, when you do have your icons created, that's where you link in the manifest file. Um, and this, this is just, uh, JSON describing, um, some of the some of the features like background color, uh, theme, uh, shortcuts. Um, all fields are following the official recommendation provided by Google. Um, I do not recommend removing any entry except the shortcuts described later. Um, and he encourages you to stay up to date on uh, on here for any changes um, in case uh, in case you need to make those. Uh, um, and Charpont uh, has a function that creates a, a manifest file. Um, Yeah, it looks like shortcuts is only supported by a few, um, a few different browsers. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's something you need to uh, be aware of. Um. Let's see. I'm not sure what the I'm not sure what's going on here exactly. Um The web manifest and icons have to be included in the head before the Google PWA compatibility script. Um, yeah, I'm not sure exactly what's going on uh, there. Um, uh, set. PWA internally calls create PWA dependency, which creates an HTML dependency containing all necessary resources. Um, in practice, since the package are, already relies on other dependencies like framework seven, we will leverage the add dependencies function to add all dependencies at once. Okay. So that's um that's a manifest. Uh, uh the Google PWA compatibility uh I think that's checking that the PWA is compatible with several different um environments is that uh um so yeah it goes it goes through a bunch of elements um generated by the script and uh it looks like all possible screen sizes and different os uh uh, so it helps you uh, check the compatibility 
Um, it was interesting. Uh, he found some discrepancies between the developer tool recommendations and the PWA compatibility script. Um, and they recommend using the developer tool prescriptions. Um, that is to include at least one icon uh, size of 144 by 144. Uh, so we uh, so we include that call to add dependencies um, uh, within the within the code of uh, the F7 page. Um, so we include uh, PWA and PWA uh, compat. And then when you load it again, you should see the, the new dependencies included. Um, so we, we're still missing the um, service worker and I think offline capabilities. Uh, and we check we check it there. Uh, so they, yeah, here's web.dev mentioned again. Um, they borrowed uh, code from there. Um, so we copy that and, and add it to um, the, the www folder. Um, okay, here's, uh, here's, it's like basically divided into three different, uh, logical, uh, sections that he goes into, uh, installation, activation, and fetch. Um, so here's, uh, yeah, here's the logic contained within each section um during the installation step the cache is initialized and assets like html page css js and images are asynchronous asynchronously cached um, assets respective path is taking from the server location for instance framework 7 assets are located in framework 75.7.14 uh, jQuery and shared. Uh, best practice is to look at developer tools source tab, which provides the right location. It's so actually, there's an example app in the shiny mobile um package that um has the um the the web manifest file the offline html file and the service worker file that you can have a look at um and also like yeah. kind of valid icon files um um it's actually, I don't think it's too. That's well, quite big actually for a one page app, for a one file shiny app. But, um, okay. but yeah, I, th I thought that was quite interesting to see it, like what content actually goes in these things. Um, await cache.add offline cache reload. Um, this is interesting. You can 
so you can cache other assets. Um, uh, is that if you have multiple pages? Is that would that be like where you do that, or is presumably? I don't know. I mean, maybe you'd want to if like so the the offline URLs the where presumably it's where you would find the HTML for your what your app should look like when it's running offline. And sometimes that'll get updated and things like that. But the I could I could imagine there being other things that you might want to cache like, you know, style files and things like that that, that may get updated over time. Um and you know um in a shiny context i don't know i mean it may even be possible to like cache the most recent options that a user selected or something like that um oh okay The next one is the activation step. Um, this step ensures that the service worker boots as the service worker boot up time may be delayed. Uh, the navigation preload feature guarantees to have reasonable performances by making network requests in parallel of the booting process. <laughs> in sum, don't touch this code. Um, so now that is this um is this the same or is this similar code? Okay. The, yeah, this is all it all seems to be describing the 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 kind of event code that's present in that service worker file. At the moment. Um, and then once active, the service worker intercepts all network requests sent by the client and returns answers according to a predefined strategy. Uh, so network, uh, here we set the network first strategy, meaning uh, always try to return an answer from the network, then fall back to the cache if the request failed. So yeah, if you're offline, then it then it goes to the cache. Okay. And apparently there are other uh, strategies that you can implement, but that The network first seems to to uh, that makes sense to me. Okay. This is okay. This is part of the. Oh, okay, so here's the general if else. Uh, depending on the network uh, navigation or other request. And then here's the navigation logic. Um, always try the network first. Um, otherwise, uh, this will pop up on your console and it'll, it'll load from the cache. Um, other request, um, what would, what would that be? They, uh, they go over navigation. Um, uh, yeah, I'm not too certain what the other requests would be. 
Um, but to sum up, the service worker redirects the end user to an offline cache page whenever the app is off offline, thereby offering a better user experience. Code and strongly recommend the uh, uh, same same file names. Uh, next step involves registration framework seven as a dedicated module in the app configuration. Uh, modify the we modify the config in uh, this file before initializing the app and running build js to update the minified file. Okay, so then we register it, we get the offline uh, cache file as well that we see. Um, the new PWA standard imposes returning a valid response when the app is offline. The offline page is also copied from SharePoint and below is the summarized version. Okay, after all that, uh, the app is installable and reliable. Um, and although we can further uh, tweak it for more um, optimization. Yeah. Uh, you may have a common error of uh, browser uh, cache. Uh, so it's best practice to empty it. Um, with the above approach, Shiny Mobile will always look for a service worker to register. Particularly, this would raise an error in case no service worker is found on the server. Um, what if they don't want to create a PWA, uh, let's say for less important applications? Uh, then we just add a parameter, um, allow PWA equals true or false, um, and that will make it optional. Um, and we recover it on the side, on the JS side with uh, helpers.config. Okay, last uh, bit here. Uh, you can customize the install um, All right. message, it looks like. So is the, I mean, is the intention here that like someone would navigate to the url for your app and like look at it in the browser and it have a kind of pop-up suggesting you install the app or is this um is populating things like sorry adding things like the manifest and the service worker file and stuff they're simply prerequisites before you submit your app to like an app store type thing from which people would install your app presumably you'd have to write a lot of custom code to in, in either uh setting to to make the the app installable or, or is this enough to make it installable it seems it seems i mean i don't understand what we 
what we've actually just looked at. But if that's all it, that's required to make your app installable on someone's device, it seems amazing, to be honest. But um, I'm wondering what additional stuff we'd have to do to make to so that a user could install it, could find where to install it from and yeah. Sorry. I knew I would sneak in. Oh, no worries. Um, so yeah, it, it looks like the installation criteria need to be met. Um, chat. Video bombed. Um, so this looks like the, 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 some of the prompt logic that, that we get into, um, some more. Uh, some more logic involving the button. It looks like. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out what's going on. Um, another listener. Um, I'm just going over this real fast. Uh. I'm I'm curious what what this says. Okay. Yeah, I I'm not like Yeah, I'm not too sure too sure. Uh Oh, it looks like there's other install methods as well. Um But yeah, I'll 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 just link this as well. Um, and say, I don't know for sure. Um, he does show you how to change some of the colors or, or whatever. Um, and then gives the final uh, code as well. Um, so that all was Sharpont and their PWA framework. Um, and then the reader may also consider packages like shiny.pwa that creates a PWA compatible structure at runtime uh, within the www folder. Um, I'm not knowledgeable enough to know if there are other resources uh, for shiny, if any of that's changed since the writing of the book within like the last two years. Um, and I'm also still not entirely sure the, um, like where, where having an installable file really uh really gets starts to get some benefit for your shiny app um maybe i just don't uh have my own personal use cases for that right now but 
um, it is pretty cool that you can um, get to this level for on a shiny app. Um, so we got through that. Uh, <laughs> I will be, I'm interested in, we've got like two more mobile chapters. Um, and then, uh, you know, three, three various chapters to end the book. Um, so yeah, we're, we're yeah. definitely, definitely getting there. Mm-hmm. yeah yeah cool i think that final chapter 29 is quite short as well um and yeah um i think i don't know i think this is an interesting um case study there are a few um uh tutorial well workshops and things related to shiny mobile itself um but the um using shiny mobile and chapont and golem all together seems to be kind of necessary in order to make well maybe not necessarily golem but it did say that it had to be a your app had to be in a package and things um it seems to be necessary in order to 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 build these apps using shiny so I'm quite i'm wondering whether I, like it how simple a like game or uh you know like a kind of weather app or something like that you could build that would be shiny handling the bulk of the code and the shiny mobile making it installable on a um on a mobile device like whether you would actually have to kind of um i don't know i presumably it costs a bit to in, to put something on an app store or something and to make it installable on on devices so it's not necessarily something that you can experiment with but maybe I, maybe i don't know um but yeah it's i think this is a really fascinating kind of area for that where shiny can move um yeah cool so we've got two more chapters of this uh, of this case study the next one is is it two chapters or is it three the, the the next one is about the different user interface widgets and things that are available in um that have been made available from framework seven using shiny mobile um so that'll be quite cool because presumably there are there are subtleties you know if you're if you're building stuff for people to you know interact with with their fingers it's slightly different from things that they will interact with by clicking and anyway for that that's for next week right um yes okay so thanks everyone for coming along and uh thanks travin for for taking us through that chapter because it, it it there was a lot of stuff in that chapter that I, i'm not particularly fluent with i think maybe looking through the dev what was it dev.2 or something um tutorial might be quite good for us but yeah brilliant thanks anyway um uh next week i'm not sure who's presenting next week but if it's if no okay. one's signed up i'll i'll do it so, sorry Arthur. okay um right anyway thanks i will see you all next week anyway <laughs> bye everyone bye. see you later thanks driving <laughs>